I'm Spencer. I'm Laura, and we're Married with Board Games. And we're back with more of our top 100. This time we're doing 70 through 61. All right. And as we've been saying at the beginning of every video, uh, we had kind of a precise way that we came up with our list. And so for how we did that, go back and watch watched that first video, the number 100 through 91, and then of course all the ones after that, because mm -hmm. you don't want to miss anything. Right. Uh, but let's get right to it. Let's get right to the list of, of this one, number 70. Kicking us off at number 70 from Fantasy Flight Games is Fury of Dracula. Third edition. Right. Yes. Um, as soon as we, I mean, when we started out in the hobby, we didn't mm. know that much about the publishers mm -hmm. and, and how all that worked. And um, as we started learning more and whatnot, I kind of became fascinated by this idea of games kind of almost going extinct from mm. yeah. um, no one being able to publish them anymore. Yeah. And um, when we saw that, when we heard about that, about Fury of Dracula, um, was not going to be put a, out again. And we saw it at um, our... FLGS, mm -hmm. I went, we need to get this game. <laughs> well, you had your eye on it for a while. I had. It, it, it's it's in my wheelhouse as far as the theme. You like Victorian horror, kind of? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it just sounded fascinating to me. And I'm so glad we got this game. Yeah. It's been so worthwhile. Yeah. Um, hidden movement. I like it. I mean, the one versus many aspect um, of it. Combat. Yeah. All to, sorts of stuff. Trying to find Dracula. I've never actually played Dracula. You have, though. You did a pretty good job. Thanks. Leading us all across yeah, the country. I, I held y'all out for yeah. like three weeks. I, I think for me it's a little bit longer than what I'd like, but it's still a fun experience. Mm -hmm. and yeah, we do have to set aside quite a bit of time to get this one to the table. Yeah. But when we do, I feel like it's worthwhile. Yeah, we have a great time with it. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's on our list at number 70. At number 69, another relatively new game, and that's Seikatsu from IDW Games. Yeah. Um, we had the pleasure of doing a little live playthrough of this game uh, during, while everybody else was having fun at Gen Con, we did one on our YouTube channel, and we played it wrong, as we usually do for our first. What? I take full responsibility for that. So if you do go watch that, just know that there's some rules mistakes. But that's the thing, right? This is a very easy game. You shouldn't really, if you read, like you're supposed to read, you shouldn't have any trouble learning this game, but it's great. It's so a, much so that our four-year-old daughter easily comprehends this game and yes, plays with us. Yes, Now, the, the, there's a final scoring aspect at the end that she doesn't really understand as far as planning ahead for that, but she understands the match and the colors and that if she puts one color uh, bird next to, you know, adjacent to other birds of the same color, she knows how many points she's going to get when she does that. And she loves playing it. Mm -hmm. It's a great to look at game. Oh, it is. I love so the, the round plastic tiles. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that perspective scoring is really unique. Yes. Basically, depending on where you're sitting on the board. Really, I really like it. Indicates, that. you know, how you score was going to be different from somebody else. True. And um, that is... It's true in all aspects of the game because this is a one to four player game. One to th yeah, 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 and, if you play teams. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, even in solo mode, it's it's interesting mm -hmm. going about that of um, playing them down the right way um, because you, as the solo player, you can score the birds as mm -hmm. you lay them down. And then at the end, you combine the other two pagodas together. Oh, interesting. To be the opponent's score when you're scoring the flower rows. Very interesting. Against yours. If you're doing a hard mode, you don't score the birds. Mm -hmm. You only do the flowers. But yeah. if you're going kind of easy, which is what I did, <laughs> um, you score the you can score the birds as well. It, it's it's interesting to yeah. play in any player count. Um, so we really enjoy it, and it's also easy to carry around yeah. and quick. Very quick, to yeah. To teach, and quick. that's really why it's on our list. Yeah. Seikatsu from IDW. <laughs> Number 68 on our list is one that has been near and dear to me since the first time we ever <laughs> played it. And even though we don't even own it. We don't even own it, if our friends do, but every time we get together, I always insist they mm -hmm. bring it, and that's a la carte from Fantasy Flight Games. Now, this was back in the days of Fantasy Flight when they weren't doing strictly, like, IP games like Lord of the Rings stuff and Star, Star Wars. Wars and 
Cthulhu style games. This is when they had quite a larger variety of types of games they were putting out, and I kind of miss those days. Oh, I know, especially if they were all around the caliber of mm -hmm. this. Lots of fun. Uh, the dexterity elements are something that are different than mm -hmm. what I'm used to, and it was one of the first cooking games that I had ever played. And mm -hmm. I love the components yeah. of this. Um, the the frying <laughs> pans are so cool. The, frying, the, the stove And the tops, stoves, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're so neat. Um, and it, even though it's annoying at the end of the game having to put all the granules yeah. back into the spice. But it's so cream. worth it to shake those shakers <laughs> and getting so frustrated when the ones that you want don't come out. When How about when nothing comes out? Or when nothing comes That's out. That's really frustrating, yeah. let me say. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's a lot of fun and yep. it's it's really fun when you introduce this to new players and you start pulling out those components and they're going, oh my well, gosh. And it's so unique. Like it... it a lot of dexterity games are similar in the fact that either like you're stacking something or you're flicking something. Um, but this one, it's like, it's very specific to the theme of the game. Oh yes, they go mm -hmm. so well together, fit hand in hand, mm -hmm. and I really yeah. appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's how it got to our list at number 68, and that's a la carte. For number 67, we're going to talk about another large group game, and that is The Resistance from Indie Boards and Cards. Now, um, this is the one where it's like, you know, a team of basically um, rebels. Re rebels, essentially, yeah, trying to overthrow the government or whatever. Right. But then there are some hidden spies that you don't know. I mean, they know who they are, but nobody else knows, and they're trying to derail the missions that you're going on. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward game. Um, but I like the aspect of the vote, the whole voting system. Mm -hmm. That's really what, what makes this game interesting because you really have to pay attention to how people are voting. You know, are they always voting for certain people to go on teams or are they always voting down for other people to go on teams? You know, it's, it's real interesting to pay attention to that. Um, right. Well, and also um, when whoever's the leader, mm -hmm. the mission leader, yes. how they pick. How they pick, yeah. Who, who's on the team? It's, oh my goodness, I just get so tense. You do. And you nervous do. playing this game. I always feel like I'm making the wrong decision. <laughs> I feel like I'm a horrible spy, you know, making yeah. those missions fail. I think I'm so obvious. <laughs> I'm trying not to be, but then I probably make it even worse. Oh well, my gosh. I like too that as a spy, a lot of times you don't even have to do anything real. Um, you know, real involved. Sometimes you just have to sit back and let everybody else kind of fight amongst themselves because as long as you don't, you know, pass those missions, mm -hmm. you know... Well, even you, approving the team to yeah, go on the mission. Right. If, if the team doesn't get approved after round, after round, after round, you could easily tank the game like that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot going on in this in this game and, and, and we really enjoy it and that's the resistance. All right, we've got another Lovecraft... Cthulhu-themed game mm -hmm. on our list here, and that's Tides of Madness from Portal Games. Um, an excellent two-player game, drafting. Yeah, drafting, yeah. That's how you taught me Yeah. Um, drafting. Yeah, um, and it's. I think it does it extremely well, and I like that, that variable set collection, essentially. Oh, I know. Basically, you have to decide almost... From round to round, if you're going to stick with what you're going for or kind of abandon ship and maybe, you know, change your tactics as far as what cards you're keeping and passing back and forth. Mm -hmm. I could see how going into it, you would think it'd be very easy to mm -hmm. just, especially as, as few cards as mm -hmm. there are in the game, to decide, I'm always going to go for these kinds of cards. Right. But you can't. Right. With the with the way the drafting right. works. Well, then sometimes you get stuck with those insane cards. Oh man! And you have to and take those, those tokens. tokens. Yes. That's that's another tricky thing too is having to decide. Okay, if I keep this card, it's really good for me, but it also has those tentacles, which means I'm going to get an insanity token. But then token. sometimes you get a card that the person with the most insanity tokens, you get a point, yeah. or you get a point per token. Something like that. One yeah. of those. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes it's work. it can work in your yeah. favor. Well, this, yeah, and this is a great, it's a small footprint. Excellent, mm -hmm. like you said, excellent. Two player, excellent couples game, really, because there's not really a whole lot of take that in your face t style of confrontation. And, and who doesn't love to drive their other, their <laughs> significant other insane? I do that on a daily basis. Um, but, and the artwork is simply, oh my goodness. I mean, as beautiful as tentacled monsters can be, um, it's a gorgeous looking game. I know. I, I can't 
get over the artwork on that. Yeah. And, um, and, it, and I think it well, it's well-deserving of the 66th spot on our list, and that's Tides of Madness. Well, let's continue the madness theme and go to number 65, the Arkham Horror mm -hmm. card game. Yes. Now, we like Arkham Horror, but there's just, I think, it's, it's a little bit dated and a little bit too much for it to make our list. And I think this does a good job of sitting in its place. Okay, yeah. Um, this is an, again, this is a, you know, when you get the core set, it's a two player game, one to two player. We, of course, played it together, went through the campaign, the initial campaign. I mean, that was a lot of fun. Um, so it was hard. It was very hard. We had to redo a couple things. Yeah. I would see that if this was a little bit more of a sustainable game, this could be higher on our list. But the problem is with it being like that campaign style and having to buy more sets of cards to continue the story, mm -hmm. you know, we're just not going to get around to it as much. Number one, for the cost. Right. And number two, for the time, too, to commit to it. Right. Um, and we've also found that, you know, between sessions, if we took too long between, we'd have to spend a lot of time we have to going ourselves. back through the rule book. It's, yes. It's, it's not an overly complex game, but there's just kind of a lot of stuff going on. That yeah, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and say it, that I think there are just some things that are not as straightforward yeah. in this game as there are in some of the other right. Fantasy Flight uh, Lovecraft mythos right. games. Um, as far as, like, combat mm -hmm. and, and damage inflicted and whatnot, I, I just don't think it's all as straightforward. Right. Um, one of my favorite things about the game, though, is instead of rolling dice for your checks, you're digging into that bag and pulling out tokens, and they have a modifier on it, and based on what's on that, that you compare that with your your skill, and that is what your your amount of damage or whatever that you do. And and so I love that, you know, it's it's so nerve-wracking reaching oh, into that incredibly. bag. I feel like it's more nerve-wracking than rolling a die, because there are so many tokens in there. And Depending the, on your difficulty, that's yeah. something I like is that you can how variable that can be mm -hmm. for your difficulty of deciding what yeah. goes in there. Yeah, but this does a great job with the theme. Um, it's oh, very yes. very immersive, I think, and an excellent option if you do like that style of of game where you're you're continuing on the story, but having to buy cards essentially. Mm -hmm. And so. I think they do a great job writing the flavor text. Yeah. Um, the the story as you progress through mm -hmm. each of those kind of stages and whatnot. I mean, I I agree that that is so immersive. Yeah. And I feel like I'm really in that story yeah. the way they the way they write well, it. Well, and lots of kind of decisions. There there are almost some choose your own adventure style decisions yeah. too going on. So we really like it, and that's why it's number sixty five. Arkham Horror: The Living Card Game. Next on our list from Plan B Games at number 64 is Century Spice Road. Um, we first got to play this at Dice Tower Con, and I I was so happy we got to do this. Oh, yeah. We were enamored because, with it. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's um, such a great engine builder. Oh, I, yes. I think it's it could be my go-to, like, introducing new gamers mm -hmm. to engine building. Yeah. Um, with the way that that works. And um, I like that you can take those resources and exchange them for others. Yeah. That is so helpful. If you're just not finding the cards to be able to get those other resources that are higher, that are worth more, mm -hmm. um, being able to kind of build up on the yeah. less expensive ones to be able to trade them in and get something that's more expensive. I really enjoy yeah. that mechanism. Well, and it's, I think the thing I like most about it, well, I like the size of the cards. There are a couple of things I like. I like the size of the cards. I like the bowls that comes with it. Mm. Thanks for the bowls. But I love the quick turns. You just basically, you, you play, play a card and, and do what's on the card and go around the table. It's so, blam, 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 yeah, blam. there's no, you can't, there's not much cross talk, table talk with <laughs> anybody yeah. especially we were at a convention and we were yeah. playing with another person that we hadn't met before and i'm trying to just like you know small talk but we don't have time for that in this game because mm -hmm. then spencer's over here going it's your turn oh i'm so, I'm so yeah. sorry and um but and, and at the same time that can distract you because you really want to pay attention to what your opponents are doing and you don't want to let them get the upper hand on you there right. so you've got to watch what they're up to mm -hmm. and um i think that all of those things together um it's so much fun. Yeah. Well, and it definitely set a great ground level for playing beat games to kind of build off of for oh, the future. Yeah. And and uh, I'm sure in the future, more of their games will appear on our list. But at this point in time, this is only one of their games that we've played. So. Right. And so I think it's at a good spot here. Number yep. 64 on our list. And that's Century Spice Road. 
At number 63 is another Red Raven game, um, and this one is Klondike Rush. Now, this one's, again, this is another pretty brand new game. Yes. And this one feels a lot different than any other of the Red Raven games mm -hmm. that we've played. It's basically strictly an auction game, really. Mm -hmm. um, you've got that beautiful snowy mountain scene board, and you've got those discovery tokens everywhere that have got the different things on it that you're trying to collect for to fulfill your orders. Or if you're trying to hunt the yes. Yeti, the snow beast. Um, but then you've got the different mining companies that you're trying to place out on the board That's and then so bidding on those cards that either let you, you know, get more stock in those companies that, mm -hmm. that lets you that builds up your payout later on in the game. I have to say, okay, the little mines. Yeah. I think that's one of the coolest yeah. little um, components I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can even see the cross ties in the minecart track. Well, and if you had a teeny, going into it. teeny tiny little person, you could put them inside there. <laughs> They're actually hollow. Um, yeah, <laughs> but but I like the, the the bidding aspect of it because it goes so quick. It's just everybody gets one chance, and I am always going for things I should not and paying too much mm -hmm. for things, and uh, so it's a good. <laughs> so would you say that that element might be a little bit push your luck? A little bit, yeah, because you're you're taking the chance that either <laughs> somebody's going to pay more than you or you're going to be stuck with... A high dollar. Yeah, if, if I'm trying to raise the price for the next person to spend more money on and it than me and they don't do it, then yeah, I'm spending <laughs> money I'd never intended. So there's a little bit of push luck there too. Very true. And I think a tiny bit of resource management yeah. as well because you, um, like we've talked about before, of deciding the right moment to cash in yeah. um, on how many of those little certificates you have on those cards mm -hmm. to to get some extra spending money. Yeah. Um, so you don't want to run out of money too fast that you have to play it. You want to do it at just the right time so you can get the highest amount with it. Yeah. Um, it's it's interesting. Definitely. And I, again, we love Ryan Loggett's artwork. Excellent to look at, that's for sure. Oh, yes. It's so nice. And um, I like the historical elements, too. The money. Yeah. The money. really neat. Yeah. It actually looks like the money from that time period. Mm -hmm. so. And the scenery on each of those different colored com uh, mining company yeah. cards. Uh, it, it's lovely to look at. Yeah. So I'm really glad we have this on our list. Definitely. Enjoyable bidding game at number 63, Klondike Rush. At 62, this is uh, a game we just reviewed, and this is from IDW Games, and this is Arcane Academy. Um, and this is an awesome team up between Kevin Wilson and Eric Lang. And this is just an all around and a great uh, engine building game. Mm -hmm. um, a nice little theme there with these, it's a school for kids learning spells and stuff, not and Harry Potter. it's not Hogwarts. Not, yeah, not <laughs> Hogwarts. Um, but I really like the tile linking aspect of this mm -hmm. thing where you put down the tile on your mat and then, you know, you, you if they're linked to other tiles, you can, you and have you to, you have to exhaust the one that you're doing the action for. But if it's linked to other tiles, you can do those without having to exhaust them and you can come back and do them later. Mm -hmm. Nice little um, chaining element going on there. That's yes. really cool. Um, and then I like just, just how everything works together as far as those exhausting the tiles and almost feels worker placement-y. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's a really fun, simple uh, to teach game. Well, and I like the wide range of the assignments yeah. that you can fulfill. Of um, I think they are so, they level the playing field really well. Something that's super powerful might not be that um, expen uh worth as many points at yeah. the end of the game and, and vice versa. Yeah. It's nothing that, like there's one particular kind of card that if you get that one, you're going to win the game. I mean, it's different each time, I feel like. It's very balanced, for sure. Extremely. Yeah. And the component quality is great. Those giant shards are really cool, mm -hmm. and those dials and the player mats. Oh, yes. Um, I really enjoy this. Great, great, fun game. Number 62, Arcane Academy. You know what? I think within this section of the list, we might have set a record. <laughs> I think we did. For how many Lovecraft Cthulhu <laughs> What is that? Three? Themed. Yeah, this is our third one. Three, yep. um, number 61 is Cthulhu Gloom from Atlas. And mm. um, 
This is so neat. It is. Now, this is one that, you know, obviously, if if you know someone that doesn't like Cthulhu game, uh, Cthulhu theme, most, mostly you wouldn't play those games with them, but you, they still might come across okay. But this one definitely, it, there's some there's some humor on here you're probably not gonna get if you don't know these stories. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind with this right, one. Right, so the, I mean, there are other, there's regular gloom. Fairy tale gloom, gloom in space. I mean, there's lots of different glooms. Haven't we played Adam's Family gloom? Well, that is regular gloom. It's oh, like okay. Adam's Family kind of. Okay, yeah. and um, it's, I love these cards. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's the, the clear first cards. thing that people say whenever we bring this game out is these cards are so cool. Mm -hmm. I love putting those modifiers on each other. Yeah. I think it's so funny that, I mean, you're going totally opposite of what you ever do in a game. You want negative yeah. points and yes. modifiers on your people. You yeah. don't want positive. You want to put the positive on other people. It's definitely a mindset change you have to do. Mm -hmm. And you really need to pay, you have to pay attention to those icons mm -hmm. yeah. on some of those. and. Um, whether it's being able to score extra or if it's something that prevents you from doing something, that's something mm -hmm. that I, I can have trouble with of not remembering until I've already laid it down. Then I go, oh, wait, this card said I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And then I've shown you all what's in my hand. Yep. It, uh, it's kind of a mess. Well, what I like about it is it does have that text on there. And the idea is they provide you this this framework. If you want to, you can use this as a storytelling game. Mm -hmm. That if you play down this card, oh, poor you know, Wilbur Watley, you know, did such and such, and so now he feels so much more, you know, you can kind of build this narrative as you play. It's optional, you That's don't have to, fun to do, but, but Keith Baker, you know, did a really good job of, of setting down that framework, mm -hmm. and I really enjoy that, and you know, sometimes you get into it and sometimes you don't, it just kind of depends on the mood that you're in, um, but it's great that you can play it one way or the other, yes. with or without that. Mm -hmm. and, and we just, we always, laugh and yeah. laugh when we play this game mm -hmm. it's so much fun we really enjoy this one and we're really glad to have this one on our list at number 61 cthulhu gloom that'll do it for this segment of our top 100 list next time we're getting close to being halfway done so oh, we're getting excited man. Uh, yeah so uh make sure that you you're all caught up Mm -hmm. keep watching for the future ones in the meantime if you want to follow us see what we're working on Otherwise, like other reviews or our podcast, how can they do that? Well, uh, you can follow us on social media, Twitter at Married with BG, Instagram at Married with BG, Facebook.com slash Married with BG. And there are links to all of our social media accounts on our website, Married with BG.com. Which you'll also find our podcasts and all of our other reviews too. And our blog. Yeah, exactly. Thanks so much for watching. We look forward to next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.